Hello everybody and welcome back to the seventh episode in this Python for Beginners tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering chain conditionals. Now if you remember back in the fifth video we looked at conditions, right? And today we're going to learn how to put several conditions together to make a chained conditional. Now let's start off with a really easy example um, and in order to set the scene for this example I'm going to say the following. We have to imagine a liquor store which decides upon whether they're going to sell alcohol to an individual. Now, in Europe, the legal drinking age is 18, so we're going to let's make a variable, uh, a variable and assign the age 18 of an individual. And then we're going to make an if statement and ask whether the age of the individual is greater than or equal to the legal drinking age, which is 18. And if this uh, statement is true, then we want to print that the sale of alcohol, sale of alcohol is permitted. However, if the individual is not over the age of 18 or equal to the age of 18, then we're going to say in an else statement that the sale of alcohol is not permitted. So we're going to go ahead and print the sale of alcohol is not permitted. So we have an individual who's 18 years old and here we're going to ask whether or not he can purchase alcohol. Let's go ahead and run this easy statement first. Um, and of course, since his age is 18, um, the if function, or, uh, the if statement over here um, has the condition age greater than or equal to 18, which is, returns the value of true, right? Because age over here is 18. And so the first, um, this code is executed, which prints that the sale of alcohol is permitted. But now, to understand how we use chained conditionals, we are going to introduce the identification into our example. Now, let's carry on the example that I was giving beforehand. So we have this liquor store, and they say that, uh, and and um, in order to purchase alcohol, you don't only need to be of the legal drinking age, which is 18 or above, but you also have to show your identification. Now, let's say that the individual has an identification and give this variable the value true. If an individual doesn't have um, his identification, then this would be false. So just to make this clear, the values assigned over here the age and the identification concern, for example, a specific person, you or me, right? And from here on out, in this if-else statement, we have the shopkeeper who decides whether or not to sell alcohol. So now we are going to expand this condition uh, and make a chain conditional because it is not enough to be over or equal to the age of 18. You also have to um, have a valid identification. So identification needs to be equal to true. And remember that if we are using the equal sign, um, two equal sign after another, it compares the values. And if we use one equal sign, it assigns a value. Yeah. All right. So we are going to um, run this program, but Hold on, before we run it, let's just quickly think about what result we should expect um, in the console after we run it. So we have an individual who is 18 years old and has identification on him. So if he goes to the store and um, uh, wants to buy alcohol, the age is greater than or equal to 18, so he is in fact of legal drinking age, and at the same time, he has identification because identification is given the value true. So this entire condition over here returns the value true. So this if statement is true. That's why the code that is um, after this colon is executed. And so we should see in the console after the, we run the program that the sale of alcohol is permitted. 
So let's go ahead and run this again, and we see, indeed, the sale of alcohol is permitted. All right, so now how about uh, we try and expand this example a bit further and go into more detail on the, con on the chained conditionals. Let's say that um, we don't only have a identification, we also have a driver's license, right? And um, now if we don't have an identification, we can, instead of the identification, show a driver's license, right? So how about um, we say that our individual who is going to the store to buy alcohol does not have a driver's license. So we're going to give the driver's license a false and we're going to expand the condition even further just to get the concept of chain conditionals across really well. Um, we're going to say that the identification needs to be true or the driver's license license needs to be true because usually the driver's license also shows how old someone is so you can see the age from the identification or the driver's license right so we can say that this is true or this is true all right so now we have an individual who's 18 years old has an identification but does not have a driver's license um, so let's see what happens if we run this program again, right? The sale of alcohol, as you see here, is still permitted because we said that it is enough for the individual to either show his identification, um, his ID card, or his driver's license, right? Both show the age, so it would be viable to say that either can be shown in a store. But how about we say that our um, individual might have his uh, driver's license. Um, you know, in Germany, it's actually possible to do your driver's license with 16 years of age. So let's say our individual is 16 years old. He has his identification. He has an ID card. And he also has a driver's license. He was very early and, you know, went ahead and did it very early in his life. And then we are going to run this again. Before we do, let's quickly think about what we expect to happen. So the age over here is under the legal drinking age, but this is a necessary requirement. So this is going to return false, right? And then what happens with the identification or the driver's license doesn't really matter anymore because this condition is binding. You'll see what I mean when I run it we'll see that the sale of alcohol is permitted. Oh, hold on. I'm actually glad this small mistake uh, happened because we actually need to put everything that comes after and into parentheses, right? Um, yeah, that is an important uh, change we need to make um, because otherwise, if we don't have parentheses around this um, entire statement, uh, it's going to go ahead and uh, read it by saying um, that the age is, in fact, um, under 18. However, he does have a driver's license. So we need to enclose both of these after the and so that this condition remains binding. Now you will see that if I run this again, it will say that the sale of alcohol is, in fact, not permitted. So now everything is in order again. All right, so now we have expanded our chain conditional statement. Let's go ahead and do a couple more uh, examples. Let's say that um, our individual is 25 years old and he does not have an identification. False, because he lost it. False, I uh, can't type today, there we go. And the driver's license, let's say he left it at home. Um, and so there we go. We have an age of 25, no identification and no driver's license. So now, even though he is of the legal drinking age, he should not be able to get his alcohol because he has no way to show that he is in fact um, 25 years old. 
So if we go ahead and run that, we're going to see it say that the sale of alcohol is not permitted, which is exactly what is supposed to happen. All right, so we're going to leave it there for this tutorial. In this tutorial, we learned how we can put together several conditions into a longer condition called a chained conditional by using the key words and and or. Now, if this video helped you out, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and put the post notifications on to stay up to date on this Python for Beginners tutorial series and see you in the next one.